So what we're going to talk about here is a new functionality uh, within the Microsoft Teams uh, I toolkit, which I think it was part of the first version of version five, uh, where we can easily import an existing SharePoint framework solution and continue developing uh, using the Microsoft Teams toolkit uh, and the SharePoint framework uh, for within your tenant. So we know that there's a lot of tens and tens of millions of uh, monthly active users for custom SharePoint framework solutions out there. And you can use the SharePoint framework regardless of the name. You can actually use it within the Microsoft Teams uh, as an extensibility platform. And there's a lot of actually usage on that side as well, because SharePoint framework gives you the capabilities of automatic hosting, single sign-on, all of that things. It's super easy to implement that stuff. Now. Uh, and especially there's so much existing investments uh, in a SharePoint framework. And quite often people actually want to have the same functionality in multiple different locations. You might want to build a web part in SharePoint and then you want to expose that as a Microsoft Teams tab. And you can easily do that without any code changes. And that's pretty mind boggling uh, and easy to do with SharePoint framework. Now with SharePoint framework, we started with SharePoint and that's where the name is coming from. Um, and then we extended uh, to Microsoft Teams, then we extended to Microsoft Viva, and then we extended to Outlook and Microsoft 365M, which is uh, used to be also known as office.com or Microsoft365.com. Uh, so you can actually use the SharePoint framework to build in all of these capabilities. And the coolest thing here was the automatic code hosting. Uh, so you can build a code that's powered by, you write the code using TypeScript, it will be converted to JavaScript, and then it will be all automatically hosted for you. So you don't have to worry about asking somebody to spin up an Azure uh, instances to host your code. You can just host the code directly within any Microsoft 365 tenant for free. And that's actually a pretty cool thing. And obviously everything is based on industry standards. So it's a web stack tooling and you can use Angular, React, uh, whatever is your chosen uh, JavaScript framework within here. Now, today we're gonna do a quick demo, step-by-step uh, -step demo on, on uh, using the Microsoft Teams toolkit. So a scenario where you have already implemented something, for example, as a Microsoft, uh, uh, sorry, as a SharePoint a web part. And of course, SharePoint web part works as such in the Microsoft Teams as a Teams tab, but you wanna take advantage of the Microsoft Teams toolkit. So what would be the steps of actually walking through migrating the existing SharePoint framework solution uh, to work together with Microsoft Teams toolkit, which by the way, obviously still means that it's a SharePoint framework solution. So you can use Yeoman Generator as, as is, you can use all of the SharePoint framework scenarios as is, but you actually get that Teams toolkit uh, functionalities and a shell on top of the SharePoint framework solution. That's what this is all about. Uh, the advantages of using the Teams toolkit is definitely the easy F5 debugging. Uh, so it is actually in matter of uh, seconds even, uh, right after you obviously need to run the npm install once, but right after that it's a matter of seconds, uh, you can actually debug your solution directly within a Microsoft Teams in Outlook or Microsoft 365 app, um, because there's a dynamic workbench which is available for you over there. And that makes it super easy to implement uh, scenarios with SharePoint Framework directly within the Microsoft 365. Um, there's also support for multi-taps and SPFX solution, all of that stuff. But today we're gonna focus on importing existing SharePoint Framework solution as set uh, to the uh, Microsoft Teams uh, uh, toolkit and that was included in the v5 version which is the latest version uh, and of course from that moment forward um, it is there uh, in the future as well now let's do a quick demo on this one uh, one step at a time uh, i played around with one specific scenario already yesterday which i'm going to demo but i'm going to show a simple clean setup as well because it's actually mind-bogglingly simple to do then debugging within the microsoft teams toolkit uh, with the code so let's start with a, a quick situation where we are right now. So I have created a, I'm using SharePoint Framework 1.18. 1.18.1 1 .18 .1 is actually the latest version, which went live earlier today, but 1.18 is the one which I used here uh, to create a web part solution. So now if I do a Visual Studio Code open up, we can actually see that this is a typical SharePoint Framework solution. Let me zoom a bit. Where's the button? Uh, there we go, wrong direction, zooming. There we go, now we're zooming in. So this is a SharePoint framework solution. Uh, I've created a one web part here called Cool Tab web part because it's uber cool. Um, and so a basic setup, it's a SharePoint framework web part. Uh, it's in this case, it's built using React and, and the basic shell is actually getting created in here. So nothing too special. This exists already. Uh, it might've been used already in SharePoint as a web part, but you wanna get this one 
included in the Microsoft Teams Toolkit shell. And let's go through that steps directly within this Visual Studio Code window. So in my case, I'm going to go and open up Teams Toolkit. Uh, and as we are on top of existing SharePoint Framework Solution, it does not detect that it's a SharePoint Framework Solution because that's not how Teams Toolkit actually works. We need to create a shell solution on top of that. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select a, a option, uh, create a new application. Then I'm going to say uh, I'm going to create a new tab. And then in the new tab selection, I'm going to use uh, SPFX, which works in Teams, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 app, and obviously in SharePoint as well. But you know, uh, I can click that one. And then there's a new option available, which is import an existing uh, solution, uh, SharePoint framework solution here, uh, which we will actually click to start the process. So it is select asking me to select uh, what is the folder uh, where we're going to actually start. And I'm actually pretty close. Uh, I'm almost in the same folder where we started. Uh, I need to just go to the simple React. That's the root folder of the solution, my SPFX solution. I will select that solution. The next question is, OK, where do you want to store this solution? So what is the location where you want to store? By default, uh, it's using my C user, uh, my user account name. I don't like my C drive to get uh, uh, filled with random samples. So I'm going to actually go here and I'm going to say, uh, let's go to the E drive. Let's actually use that one as a quick, uh, quick path. And then I have PMP folder and then let's do teams, uh, teams apps. There we go. So I'm putting that in my E drive, which is a bit of a bigger file uh, or a location. And I'm saying that this is the, the primary, oop, a primary uh, folder uh, where I'm going to actually then import that existing SPFX solution. So let me select the folder. And then it's going to ask me, OK, so what is the solution name, what you're going to uh, use within the Microsoft Teams uh, toolkit? And let's use the uh, cool tab because it's incredibly cool, right? So I'm going to click, uh, click uh, Start. I can now close the previous uh, window in here because there's no value on that one. I'm going to extend in here. And, and our uh, solution actually has been now migrated to the Teams Toolkit. And the way I can actually see that is that now if I go to the Teams Toolkit uh, and open up Teams Toolkit from here, oop, let me do that one more time. We can see that I'm inside of the Teams Toolkit in the Visual Studio Code uh, solution. I'm connected to my example tenant. I actually signed in previously, but you could every single time you sign in, it will actually remember that uh, signed in tenant. You can change that as well. Uh, I have the environmental settings, and I have the, the lifecycle settings and, and quick actions I can do directly from the left navigation. In my code structure, uh, we can see that the folder structure, if you're familiar with SharePoint framework structure, uh, we can actually see that my web part is in here. So what happened was that we actually copied the SharePoint framework solution to a folder called SRC, so as in the source, and then we created this parent folder where we have all of the Microsoft Teams toolkit uh, adjustments and settings and configurations. The cool thing about what this also means is that now that we did that in a matter of seconds, we can actually debug this incredibly easily. So now if I do uh, a, play, a run and debug, and I can say, let's start from Teams uh, Workbench, or Outlook Workbench or Microsoft Teams app, I can just say Teams Workbench and in Teams, press play. I didn't do any adjustments, any things. Now, the only thing what we now need to actually wait is a bit of a, a bit of a wait time where we need to run the NPM install within the solution because we don't have currently all of the packages and all of that actually downloaded. But what happens here is that we're running basically validation of the Teams toolkit adjustments and settings directly in Visual Studio Code, making it super easy uh, that everything is working. And then we're running in here, we can see on the right side, we're running the command npm install uh, uh, for the solution. And this basically means that we're downloading all of the node module packages, making sure that that's happening. And obviously, that's a one-time thing. Uh, so next time when I'm starting debugging, I don't need to wait this much as long as I have a local copy of the node modules within my uh, computer. So as I just created the solution and I haven't run npm install uh, on top of this imported solution, uh, I need to wait a few, uh, few minutes uh, to download all of these files in. Now, as we're waiting for this one, uh, oop, that went really, really fast. Wow. So let me go in here. Are we already done? Or did we actually have a deployment? No, we are all good. We are starting. Uh, the file npm install has been done. 
we are now doing the next steps. We are starting our local host server. We're copying the assets, so we're doing packaging, all of that stuff for the solution. Uh, and I didn't do anything else than saying import the solution and move it directly in this folder. That's actually really, really cool. Now it's actually spin up my browser window in here. And let me put that one a bit here and let me go in here and let me hide in that section. And then I need to sign in. So we can actually do the debugging. It will send me the verification code uh, thing. So I'll do that within my browser, 62. Okay, 62, security is important. And doesn't really matter. It depends on the machine. Are we going to stay in or not? Or stay signed in or not within the debugging sessions? So now we're validating. We're running the code debugging directly live within the Microsoft Teams uh, workbench, which is dynamically loaded. And again, I didn't do any adjustments. I just basically said, here's the solution. Here's the SharePoint framework solution. And I click F5 or manually the play, play icon in the window. And all of a sudden, magically, without any adjustments, everything is automatically done. We're loading the teams. Here we go. Now it looks promising. It does the final warning. I need to install the, the solution. It does that automatically as well. Super cool. Uh, this time it was a really simple solution. I'm adding that to the tenant. That was one click. And here we go. And then it actually moves directly loading the code. And now we will get a warning uh, here, which is basically do we allow debug scripts. And this is a security browser debugging warning. And of course, we say, yeah, yeah, we're fine. We are a developer and I know what to do. If you don't know what to do, click that one. We know what we're doing, right? I'm clicking that one. And voila, our application is running in a debug mode directly within Microsoft Teams. And that's really cool. So we can actually see the stuff getting loaded uh, behind of the scenes. So if I refresh, we can see uh, on the output window uh, in here, all of the requests coming in uh, and we can start debugging. We can do F, F, F9, we can step in the code, we can check all of the variables and all of that stuff. And that's really, 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 really convenient. So extremely easy to do uh, and awesome work by the Teams Toolkit people on making it easy to reuse uh, or adjust or do the shell in the Teams Toolkit um, for the SharePoint Framework solution, making super easy adjustings. Now, that's a really simple uh, web part. I want to show actually a bit of a comp more complex one because we have plenty of time. So here we have a bit co more complex one. I'm going to do run and debug and F5. I just tested this yesterday and uh, that this is working uh, properly. Uh, a bit more complicated my, uh, SharePoint Framework solution uh, because obviously they can be much more complicated. You can do multiple tabs, all of that stuff. In this case, we already done NPM installation. We'll just run the, the startup. Clicking F5, all of the things happening. Let me go to the output window. We can actually see uh, up there in the output window. There we go. Now it's starting making sure that the trust shirt is, uh, is completed. We're starting the web uh, server here. We're doing the debugging. All of that is actually already automatically getting uh, executed. We'll spin up at the browser in a second. Any second now. And again, it's the first time we do this. Uh, it takes a bit longer than uh, thing. And of course, we can do have the live refresh as well. So we can do adjustments on the code and do refreshing. And uh, live reload is actually started on a port, uh, as we can see in the in the terminal. That makes it easier for me to do then development on live. So I can adjust the code and it will live reload that within the Microsoft Teams as needed. In this case, this is a bit of a complex, uh, more complex solution. Uh, so the webpack, initial webpack does take a bit longer, uh, but I definitely want to show you this because it's it's one of my favorite solutions. Uh, whenever we actually get the Microsoft team starting, webpack is taking a while. And if you would see me, I would, I'm dancing, just consuming the time. If I would be on the stage, I would be dancing at this point, just to. You'd be on top of the podium dancing. That's true. That could happen. Absolutely. <laughs> now, now we're going to the teams, uh, loading the teams, loading the classic. I think we will be uh, installing the solution unless I'm completely mistaken. Here we go. There's the solution. Uh, this is a sample which is available for you as well uh, from our sample gallery, a retail Contoso sample. And here we go. We're loading the code. 
And yes, we know what we're doing. So we're learning the code and we're doing live debugging on the sample. Uh, let me do this missed on that one. It is a multi-tap uh, solution. So there's an additional set of information and capabilities between the tabs. Uh, and as we're debugging, there's a bit of a delay as it's loading things, but it's actually a really, really cool looking uh, solution uh, and showcasing what you can actually build uh, together with the SPFX also in Microsoft Teams, all of this information. And again, the sample is available for you within the GitHub. We'll get the sample in the notes uh, of today's recording, so you know uh, where to get started with this one as well. But it's a really, really cool uh, scenario uh, built with SharePoint Framework uh, in Microsoft Teams. And of course, the cool thing here again is that I can do debugging in Outlook. It supports Outlook, it supports Microsoft 365 app, it supports SharePoint. So you can actually use the, exactly the same piece of code in all of these different applications. You don't need to rewrite anything. Pretty, pretty cool. Cool. That's it for that one. And we have a few links available uh, on that one. Uh, and that is missing actually the demo link to the GitHub uh, on that particular demo. I'll get that one added on the notes as well. Thank you, David, for copy pasting the links in there. Mm -hmm.